I would be good with Smith or Chase Fowler, the Dolphins, but guess what? If you're constructing the uh, basketball-like wide receiver core where you have everything, Jalen Waddle is the best fit. And I'm not so sure Jalen Waddle is better than both of those guys straight up anyway, especially if we're talking about the NFL level. This isn't college anymore. So projecting this to the NFL with his inside and out ability, which I will do here, show here on the film study, he fits the Dolphins to a T. He's what Jakeem Grant or what they people thought Jakeem Grant was eventually going to be. I don't think Jaylen you have Waddle to dedicate a top 10 pick to a wide receiver six foot and, and under. However, if you did, they better be something super explosive. So that's why I like Jalen Waddle. There's nobody more explosive than this guy. He plays a lot bigger than his frame, 5'10", 185 pounds or whatever he'll be. I consider him a Steve Smith. Some people like the Tyreek Hill and everything like that. Those guys are hella valuable. And he adds um, value, of course, in special teams. I could see him being the pick. Can I say top billing? Billin'. Yo, top billing to ya. I right, y'all. First round in the books of the draft for your Miami Dolphins. And shit, that bad boy went exactly according to plan, huh? How many of y'all watching top billing for the past two or three weeks? However, I was doing the Miami Dolphins draft content. And what did I say? Oh, well, you saw what I said according to uh, the beginning of this video right here with the previous video. So, you know, I got to gloat a little bit there. Had to take a little bit of stuff from the Miami Dolphins fans because, quite frankly, a uh, great pocket of y'all are just kind of strange. Very strange out there in South Florida, man, living out in paradise, acting weird. But you shouldn't be acting weird now because you just got damn the Houston Comet Jalen Waddle. Come on, man. That shit ain't hard. You got Jalen Waddle on your team to be combined with Will Fuller and Devontae Parker. Like I said before, you talking about building a basketball team. You got to go by your individual team. I thought that Jalen Waddle, listen, straight up, I thought Jalen Waddle was, to me, the best option for the Dolphins, even if Jamar Chase were on the board. And, of course, Devontae Smith was on the board. So, it would have been between Chase and Waddle, and I think Waddle gives you that inside presence. More explosive than Chase, can go up and get it off the top shelf, just like Chase can, can break tackles, adds value in the kick return game, plays with that crazy-ass Steve Smith-type temperament. He's going to fire up the locker room, and he's a compliment to what you already have. Uh, you go replicating positions and stuff like that, that's when shit gets weird. Devontae Smith is an outside receiver. <laughs> Let's be real here. The man is Ethiopian. You don't play Ethiopian people on the inside because they have to go against linebackers and stuff like that. Then you got to send that man 25 cents a day for his hospital bill because he's 135 pounds. And I'm just playing. Devontae Smith is going to be fantastic in the NFL. But for the Miami Dolphins, remember, I do team-specific draft coverage. I'm not just saying stuff to say it. You put that guy on the inside – with the Samoan sniper who already knows this guy like the back of his hand, that was his guy. When Jalen Waddle was a freshman, uh, he surpassed Devontae Smith and all those guys. Him and Tua had a special connection. That will continue. I, there is no doubt about that in my mind. And it just sets the draft up to be even that much better. And in the second pick, you get Jalen Phillips. And I just did that damn content on Jalen Phillips. So guess what? The guys, the football guys, they want your boy right to be able to relax a little bit on Friday here. So I get to repackage my film studies that I did. So for all you people who've already seen the Jalen Waddle film study, hey, you just get to see me talk here about the rest of the draft. And I will attach that film study on the back end for people who hadn't seen it. Make sure you support quality content like I've been asking you guys to do. Whatever you want to give is anything. Keep the lights on here with your boy Todd Billing, man. Make sure, you know what I mean, the lights stay on and I can continue to do this coverage here. And um, also... Make sure you share this on message boards and social media and everything like that. Let's get some real football heads in here, man. I'm tired of these casual fans coming in here. People who swear by mock drafts telling me this and that was going to happen and the shit way different. I mean, this draft was off the chain, entertaining. I loved it from front to back. And uh, it didn't go, I'm pretty sure, like most people thought it would, like most drafts do. 
Most drafts just don't go like people. You know why? Because people aren't Jesus. They don't know what these NFL teams are going to do. So now if you think about it from the Dolphins' standpoint, we were talking about them grabbing an offensive tackle perhaps with that 18th pick. They get Jalen Phillips, like I suggested, right? You had to go premium with that 18th pick, either an edge player or an offensive tackle. But now you come around with only four picks or you're the fourth pick in the second round tonight. And uh, there's some offensive tackles for you there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it up. Javante Williams at 36, I'm cool with that. If you got to have a running back, with, like I said, they're a dime a dozen. As great as Javante Williams is going to be, there's going to be somebody drafted in the 50s that are going, is going to perform just like a Javante Williams or a Najee Harris or a Travis Etienne. So keep that in mind. But you can't find these premium positions. And there was a couple of guys that was pushed down into the second round that might be right there for the Dolphins. Tevin Jenkins, you add him to this offensive line, slide Robert Hunt in. So that would be Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State. Slide Robert Hunt in. Solomon Kinley there. You can probably address center a little bit later if you just have to. But you know me, man. I like Michael Dieter, baby. That's just me, though. You know what I'm saying? That's y'all's team. I'm just a, a neutral observer here giving you some good analysis, I believe. And then, of course, you got your man out there at the left, Austin Jackson. That's a dope-ass offensive line, if you ask me. Nasty-ass Tevin Jenkins. I think he's just a little bit more premium than getting a running back. And y'all know I love Javante Williams. I think he's the best running back in his draft. If they do go there, I'm cool with it. But me, I don't pass up premium players, especially those that you thought that would go in the first round. Tevin Jenkins is perfect. Got to contend with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They need defensive help. Maybe they don't get him. They could use anything, though, right? They won one game. And then... Uh, the New York Jets, they took Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, I think he's going to play on the inside, though. I'm not sure how they feel about George Fenn at the right tackle. He's a team captain, so maybe they don't go there. And then the Atlanta Falcons, they don't need an offensive tackle, in my opinion. They already got two that they drafted in the first round. Tevin Jenkins is right there. Or maybe somebody jumps one of those people to grab him, though. That's, that's the thing, though, with the second round. People have overnight the stew on it and everything like that. And these guys be out like, well, damn, Tevin Jenkins is there. So if not him, a guy like, man, um, a guy like Sam Cosby from the Tex from the um from the University of Texas. I like him a lot. I thought he would be in the first round. I had a um film study on him. Um dealing with the uh, the Colts. I think he fits what the Colts do, very similar to an Anthony Costanzo that retired. He would be great, put him at right tackle. Everything's good. But maybe they feel good about Robert Hunt and keeping him at the right tackle. So I don't know what you guys think about that. Let me know in the comment section there. But I would go ahead and grab one of those guys and then look for a back later. I got a host of backs that I could tell you about. A whole round tree from Missouri. Uh, Kylan Hill from Mississippi State. I did something on Kenneth Gainwell. I'm not sure if he'll be there at the 50, but you never know. Suppose you were to get an offensive tackle and you came up with Kenneth Gainwell, a home run hitter, with the, which the Dolphins need, somebody who can flip the scoreboard. The Dolphins are lit, man. I can't even front. The Dolphins are absolutely lit. They're going to be something to contend with. Um... The, the division's going to be tough, though. You know, these other guys are on scholarship, too. Buffalo ain't going nowhere. They're the absolute shit. The Patriots get their stuff together, you have to believe. So, and then you see the New York Jets. Uh, it, in the future, they should be something to contend with. But right now, be those three teams right there. But, man, I wouldn't put any of those other two teams just right above Miami. Maybe right, you know what I'm saying? You got to give Buffalo its respect. But I think Miami's right there with Buffalo. But we shall see, right? Nothing to it but to do it. But that damn Jalen Waddle pick, man. <sighs> Nothing more else I can say, man. I've already said that shit here for the past few weeks there. So pop your collar, whatever, for all you people who like the Houston comment. Go ahead and attach that film study right here, man. And I'll be back to talk about Jalen Phillips sometimes, maybe this weekend or whatever like that. But maybe I'll just consolidate with the rest of the picks or something really jumps out at me. All right? Thank you. Make sure you support quality content, man. Make sure you check out this film study. All right. Working directly on the stitches here, running a seam route. Now, this ball is underthrown. So people want to talk about him being just 4-2 speed, or at least that dude wants to talk about him just being 4-2 speed and nothing else. Uh, no. <laughs> He's essentially whatever you think Jamar Chase is. He is that in a more explosive version. Maybe a couple of inches shorter 
but stout enough. Still working around 185 to 190 pounds. And the guy's rocked up like you wouldn't believe. Pause. And you can see it. He can go get it off the top shelf with anybody. He can't. There's nothing this guy can't do. Check this out right here. Work the stitches. Look at the look at look at the separation. Oh my God! First of all, look at the catch. Actually, look at the catch second. But look at the separation on the seam route. My man's already on a on a vertical bell off man coverage right there. He closes the cushion, stays right on the stitches. Look at the separation right there. All Mac Jones had to do was lead him here. He didn't even have to do this, but he's able to anticipate. Look at him anticipate this ball being underthrown. He's like, you know what? I'm going to attack it. And goes up and gets it over the dude. That type of shit translate no matter what you think. Look at it from this particular angle here. Mac on a little bit of pressure there. Uh, come on, man. Beta? What the? Beta? Come on, man. What are we talking about here? This man skying up over people. Uh, strong hands. This, this kid is phenomenal, man. I don't give a damn what you say. Don't get me wrong. Like I said before, Miami Dolphins are winning no matter how it goes. Panay Sewell, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, I'm good with all of them. My preference would be if it's not Kyle Pitts, I would want this dude right here to compliment the other receivers. Let's keep going. And another one right here, three-man rock combination. You got my boy John Mechie right here. Man, get well soon, kid. Got him running the over route. Got a post route right here by your boy, the Houston Rocket, Jalen Waddle. You got Devontae Smith right here doing his thing. My man, I call him Thin Diesel. He right there on a dig route. So look at this. Look at the coverage right here. It's going to be a bracketed coverage just for the simple fact that it's going to have man coverage on, on this man. Then you're going to have a post safety. You never run a post into a post safety, but he's able to do it because he's tough as shit and it don't matter. Man calling this dude beta. What? Look at this. Uh, look at this. Split the defenders. Oh, he knew he was going to take a big hit. And what does he do? Pop, he, he the first man up. Talking. Steve Smith then. Come on, man. Ice up, son. One more time full speed on that. That's hard. Look at that. Nobody wants to press this dude's off-band coverage, and he's continuously running by people. He's making it look too damn easy. Can you imagine this dude? Like, come on, man. Back to the basket play action fake. Mac launches that bad boy. Look at this. You have to have, oh, look at the hit that he took. Come on, man. Boom. Look, he takes a hit like that, man. That be them dudes that be super tough, like straight up. You want to be talking about these dudes because you think they smaller. Like, he's not smaller, first and foremost. He's shorter. But he's rocked up, and he's extremely tough, and he's got that dog in him. He's playing with that dog and that chip on his shoulder like Steve Smith Sr., and he be the dudes be one of the toughest on the field. He's the toughest guy on your team no matter who's on your team. You got these big dudes like Justin Fields. He got everybody thinking he had broken ribs and shit like that. He get hit in the, in the um, Clemson game. He's like, oh. And it's a fucking hit pointer. This dude just took a goddamn shot in the rib and jump up like what? Like, come on, man. Not to get on Justin Fields or anything, but I'm just saying. You can't judge a book by its cover, man. Big things come in small packages. Holla. <laughs> pause, pause, pause. Y'all remember that for that 50 cent skit about Ja Rule? The ability to achieve yak. Yards after the catch. Who's going to be better than this guy? Remember, he's one of the best returners look at this oh look at this shot come on. he muscle racks he must relax this man's soul out of his system one more time from that angle right there you're gonna be able to create with this guy just on something like this right jakeem grant can do this type of stuff too but he can't do the other stuff within the framework of the offense look at this muscle relaxer oh uh, broke him oh my god muscle relax that man to sleep First and foremost, make the first guy miss. Safety coming down here. Yeah, not even close. Doesn't even get close to him. Look at the eyes in the back of his head and the ability to anticipate. Muscle relaxes this dude. Muscle relaxed him. Made him fertilize himself. Look at that. He's skidding all on the ground and shit. Like a skid marks all in his draws. Come on, man. They're going to have to steam that man's draws, bro. That was bad. Georgia up here in cover six gonna have Devonte smith motion out here that'll leave waddle here on the outside he's gonna be running a bang eight right running a skinny post going against tyson campbell here who 
is a very talented cornerback. He was getting first round coverage or first round buzz up until Jalen Waddle got a hold of his ass. And that was pretty much it right there. Check this out right here. Beating this quarter, quarter half on this particular coverage here makes Tyson Campbell blow a tire. Oh, even Tyson Campbell running with his 4-3 speed, a legitimate 4-3 speed. He was another track guy, 4-3 speed. He couldn't keep up. He had to blow a tire because he panicked. Look at that. Oh, blew a damn tire. Come on. Look at the transition right here. Put him on the outside. It don't matter. Inside out, he's going to get you explosive touchdowns and explosive plays. Come on, man. The Samoan sniper couldn't use a Jalen Waddle plan with Will Fuller and Devontae Parker and Mike Jasicki. What about routing someone up in the quick game? Of course you know he can do that. He's a short area agility master. Speed out right here from the slot. Look at the separation anxiety. My man right here is going to need a pacifier after this. Real quick. Look at that. That's too easy for people. Look at Mac Jones. Look at the space. Look at the social distancing on the speed out right here. Great throw by Jones there to hit him. But, man, come on. Look how much he gave him. Christian Tut, he getting turned out. Look at that. That's crazy. What are we doing here, man? This guy, at all facets of the game, he will excel in. The long game, of course, we know he can do. Quick game, he's a master at. And, shit, he's mid-range, of course, we see with the, the digs and the posts and everything as well. But come on, man. You know what he also can do? Return kicks with the best of them. What they call it? A five-tool player like in baseball? He's that. He's that. These other guys aren't giving you this. Look at that. Ooh. Come on. You know we got to go back to that muscle. Ooh. Come on, man. They're not even getting a hand on him. You're not. He's out running the angles. You can forget about it. You can absolutely forget about it. One more time on this one here. I want to see that muscle relaxer in short space getting that pump return right oh broke down in space this is what you christian tut again he's having a bad game breaking down in space look at him freeze him look, look he could even get his hands out he could even get his hands out right he's like fuck it i'm start break dancing so he gets the beginning of the break dance where you about to spin on your head he's like man i'll do something other than try to tackle this dude makes the kicker miss, and that's it. And my man D. Hill there. D. Hill has some speed, and even he couldn't mess with it. I'm telling you, man, here back in the slot. Man, imagine if, you know, a guy like Tua would have a guy like Jalen Waddle. What could he do with that? Oh, wait. He did have Jalen Waddle. Look at Tua right here, man. Tua can't push the ball down the field, Cletus. He has a noodle arm. Come on, man. Noodle arm. Jalen Waddle had his best season with Tua directing traffic right there like a point guard out there, man. Come on, man. Like Jason Williams, white chocolate himself out there distributing that rock the legal way. So if you saw that guy's particular comment, he said something about Chase being a beast because he came and was a beast at his pro day or whatever, and uh, Jalen Waddle didn't play. And uh, What? Jalen Waddle played. He got injured. But look, but when he was playing before that injury in the Tennessee game, he had 28 receptions. He already had 591 yards, a 21.1 average, four touchdowns. Imagine what he was going to do the rest of that season had that have been kept up. That probably would have been his Heisman if you're being accurate about the situation, or at least they'd have probably canceled each other out. Right, he was having a crazy start to the season. Check this out right here. <laughs> a 100-yard game in every game, obviously in, in the four games that he was able to play in, and then... Uh, if, of course, he came back in Ohio State game. And he wasn't himself limping and hobbling around there and still was able to catch a few passes showing his toughness. But come on, you want to start to the season right there? Listen, he was technically he was getting it better than Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith was balling, no doubt about that. He had a couple of 100-yard games um, in the games that Jalen Waddle were there. But you see they were neck and neck right there. So, man, it is what it is. What? Let me know, man, what you think about your boy Jalen Waddle playing with the Samoan sniper with Devontae Parker and Will Fuller, how he fits there. Could slide right in the slot. Mike Jasicki working with that 11 personnel. And, of course, he can return some kicks for you as well. But it's just the fact that, man, he can do it at all facets of the game and all phases of receiving. Quick game work, 
get your long ball. He can get it off the top shelf, strong hands. He's going to fire everybody up on that team. He's going to play with that dog in him. Miami Dolphins football, baby. Let me know what you think about that. Well, let me know what you think about supporting quality content as well. Uh, support the or, or shout out to people who have been doing that, man. Quite a few people showing love, supporting, right? Make sure you do that, man. You don't never know, man. Some of these NFL people with these goofy ass copyright claims, man, they be coming through trying to steal money and everything. So support your content creator because I'm the best doing it right here. It's your boy Murph, the underground king, loving this Miami Dolphins content. Let me know what you think about Waddle. And like I said before, they're winning no matter what. If they get Chase, Pitts, Sewell, or Devontae Smith. But Jalen Waddle will be my choice if Pitts isn't gone. Then you can double back on 18 and get yourself an Alex Leatherwood. Double up right there. There's your guy. And then at 36, you can get yourself a running back. That's value right there. And I think that will be cool. All right. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.